Hi, everyone. It's really nice to be here. Well, it is my first time at DevX World. I don't know how many of you have been here before, but this is really exciting. So glad to be here with you and with everyone else who's watching online. So today I'm going to be joined by my colleague, Sarah Jerving, who joins us from Nairobi. And together we're very excited to speak to Dr. Amadou Saul of the Institute Pasteur de Dakar. Um, you know, as all of you know, Institute Pasteur de Dakar is one of the pioneering institutes right now in the continent of Africa. They've already been working for more than 100 years, and they have very exciting things to uh, show us and follow. And Sarah is here with us. Hi, Sarah. How are you doing? Hi, Amrita. I'm doing great. It's great to join you. Yeah, and you've been working on some of these issues. You've actually interviewed uh, people at IPD before. G tell us a little bit about what your thinking is behind you know, the position that they're in right now. Sure, yeah, it's been a really exciting year across the African continent in vaccine manufacturing and Institute Pasteur is leading the way. So I'm um, excited to learn more about what Dr. Saul has to share with us. Yeah, same here. And I'm sure everyone else is waiting as well. I just had, you know, a couple of thoughts before we get started with Dr. Saul. We are in a very interesting moment right now. It's been a little over two years with the pandemic. There's been so much conversation about inequity. You know, we, we, we've been here at DevXL reporting about it. And then there is this institute that's actually doing something about it, right? And I feel like this is the moment to actually think about how these things are actually happening on the ground, what's, who's the one making it happen? And did you also, like, you know, when you worked on your stories before, was that the thinking that you had as well? Sure, yeah, it's, it's really important to kind of figure out, I mean, the big, the big plan across uh, the African continent is uh, vaccine manufacturing in hubs, uh, regional hubs. So West Africa, South Africa, there's projects in Rwanda, there's projects in Northern um, Africa. And so it's, uh, it's been kind of this, uh, this process of following the different movers and shakers across the continent um, in the wake of uh, vaccine inequities uh, in, during the, the pandemic. That's right, and you know, this is a moment that we're living through where we're actually confronted with vaccine inequity. And something that we've been writing about also is this idea of decolonizing global health and global aid more broadly. And I think local manufacturing is really at the core of that. So I'm really excited to explore some of those issues with Dr. Amadou. I am too. And I think, you know, one of the things that, Sarah, you've brought up in your reporting is not just the fact that it is important to, you know, think about local manufacturing, but also talk to the people who are really involved in these issues and, you know, get into really like the nitty gritties of what it means uh, to be manufacturing at the local level. Tell us a little bit about what your reporting has shown us so far. Sure. Um, so, uh the, the manufacturing hub in South Africa is an interesting one. There, um, there is a messenger RNA um, tech transfer hub that has been uh, sponsored by the World Health Organization. Um, uh, the Institute Pasteur uh, has had a long tradition in manufacturing yellow fever vaccines, and they are expanding their facilities beyond that. Um, and one of the interesting aspects of their facility is they use this module um, vaccine manufacturing using um, converted shipping containers, um, and that helps them be very adaptable when the science and technology changes around vaccine manufacturing. They don't have to um, kind of create a whole new facility. Uh, they can just swap in uh, these, these uh, converted uh, modular units, which is, is pretty interesting. Right, exactly. Uh, I'm just going to check if we're still waiting for Dr. Amadou Saal and Sarah. While we're waiting, uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, what, what are we looking for in terms of reporting on this issue in the next weeks to come? Is there any exciting stories that you have for us? Sure. Um, the, uh, well, we published a story uh, last week about uh, the, um, the U.S. government had um, 
uh, launched a partnership with the uh, the M or mRNA uh, manufacturing hub in South Africa um, to kind of facilitate their their um, progress there. Um, so that is one of the um, the stories that um, we're going to be following is kind of they will be launching into clinical trials moving forward, um, which should be pretty interesting. Great, and we have Dr. Amadou Sal with us right now. So, Dr. Amadou Sal, welcome to DevX World. Really great to have you here today. I'm going to jump right in because we have about six and a half minutes. We want to make the most of the time we have. Um, you know, we were just talking about the sort of deep inequity that we're living through right now uh, that COVID has really highlighted. I want to ask you, you know, where do you see Institute Pasteur the Dakar sort of situated in this? you know, context right now? And what do you see the role of your institute to be? Thank you very much for having me uh, and this very important program. Actually, one of the role of Institute Pasteur is really to focus on the local need. And our mission is really through science, education, and public health to protect the vulnerable population. By doing that, when we face uh, vaccine inequity has what happened with COVID, our number one role has been not only to try to fix that at the national level, at Senegal level, but have a continental agenda in this regards. That's why we've been leveraging our eight years um, experience in doing vaccine for yellow fever, a vaccine which is the only WHO pre-qualified at the continental level, but also learning from all the challenge we went through to try to build a facility that would be agile, multi-product, and using the different technology. So what we are aiming with that is in the objective of making 60% of local manufacturing capacity to actually contribute at the level of 300 million every year, which is 25 million. But also not only using the technique that we master like the eggs, but also open to new technology. New technology when it comes to cell culture, new technology when it comes also actually to the way we build facility, meaning that we're using modular facility which gives a lot of flexibility and move from one product to another. And also when we talk about new technology is having an opening with the technology for the future like RNA Messenger. So we have this approach platform where we are doing through good partnership with different industry like BioNTech, but also with the partnership of African vaccine manufacturing at the continental level, we built those partnerships within the continent that would help us by having a very concerted approach to serve all the needs, which each of the five different hubs are specializing and working together to bring the R&D that is needed, to bring the product that is needed, to bring the human capital development that is needed, and also the financing that is needed. So this is what we're doing. And this is coming very well because this is also the objective of Senegal, as well as actually the objective of the continent. Thank you, Dr. Saul. Um, I'm wondering if you think there's enough research and development happening across the African continent in vaccines, and if not, why must this change? Actually, very clearly, there is not R&D research and development enough in Africa, even though we have amazing capacity in some group. Uh, right now, I'm in South Africa, and I'm visiting a couple of different groups. And what you clearly see is throughout the corner, there is a lot of capacities, but this capacity in terms of R&D do not all converge for vaccine development. And this is very important because the pipeline of product that we have to build, which is in Africa, which is lacking now, would rely very much on the research. Today, if you talk about Lassa fever, if you talk about Rift Valley fever, if you talk about malaria, these are major diseases that are impacting Africa, economically speaking, and from the public health perspective. But we do not have vaccine existing so far because the R&D is not very strong. If you look at even pandemic preparedness, the, may, the next pandemic may come from Africa. Why not? Because there are several diseases that may come out of it. And having this capacity to do research would give us this opportunity not only to prepare. We seem to have lost Dr. Sol there for a minute. But Sarah, uh, that's a really interesting question in that you Africa asked. Africa being in terms of research right now, this would clearly help actually make everybody being in a safe place because we will be that well prepared with a new product. 
Thank you. And just to follow up on that, um, we talked a bit about kind of the innovation happening at Institute Pasteur. How do you see innovation playing a role in the vaccine manufacturing space in, in terms of boosting the African continent's role in the global production of vaccine? I mean, innovation is really the key part of what we, are, what we need to do in Africa because we have to use this opportunity of leapfrog model. Why this is important? Because the future in Africa in Africa cannot be the past of other nations. Today, you can make vaccine much cheaper, much uh, more efficient in a very smaller footprint and a much lower cost of investment in CapEx. For that reason, innovation is at the heart of this. Today, that's why it's absolutely critical that innovation come to Africa and we build that ecosystem that would make innovation very, very actually efficient. When I say ecosystem, I'm talking about funding, I'm talking about the distribution, I'm talking the human capital development, and the R&D that should go together with this manufacturing. It's not just about capacity to manufacture, but building all this ecosystem around the manufacturing. Right, Dr. Sal, you know, your endeavor is to create 300 million vaccine doses every year, and that's a very ambitious target. And I'm from India, so I have to ask, are you, do you see yourself as the next Serum Institute? Where, what are your goals like? Uh, definitely, we see Serum Institute as a great success. And our purpose is to see much more success like that in developing country, in particularly in Africa, because this would completely change not only the narrative about Africa not being enough successful or not being able to, to produce what it needs, but it also will give a huge opportunity to develop the ecosystem locally while creating jobs and boosting the economy. So definitely Serum Institute is a great example. We want to see more of this, not only in Africa, but in developing countries in general, because obviously this is a great success and Africa and developing countries need some success to change the narrative and take care of our vulnerable population. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Saul. It's been a pleasure talking to you today. We will keep following this issue here at DevEx. Please subscribe to Check Up, our global health newsletter, if you haven't already. And thank you all for joining me. And thank you, Sarah, as well. Bye.